You will never get long-term relief of a tight psoas or hip flexors until you address and appreciate the role of the brain. Now, I know that sounds a little weird, but bear with me because I'm so excited to share with you guys this information that you can use to finally get your body to do what you've been trying to get it to do, and you can finally let go of all that stretching and foam rolling, all these other techniques you've tried that don't honestly really matter until you address this. Many people could think about this as balance, but we're going to think about balance in a totally different way. And I'm going to show you the major considerations and keys as to what goes into our body's ability to manage itself and its center of gravity. Ultimately, all posture is trying to do one thing. It's trying to keep us upright effectively against gravity. And we can alter and have so many different combinations of head, spine, and pelvis position, which are trying to keep an even line of our center of mass going down the midline of our body. Now our body's not stupid and it's not putting us in this position for no reason. Our vestibular system is constantly subconsciously scanning the environment and determining what is the best position for me to be in. So that way I can breathe because if I don't breathe, I'm going to die. But also I need to stay upright and I need to do that in a relatively energy efficient manner. But the problem is for many people is a, they kind of suck at breathing, and B, they don't have full movement options available to them or joint ranges of motion. So they're going to be in some posture that reflects their body saying, okay, this is what I'm working with, so this is where you're gonna be. Many people with tight hip flexors and psoas oftentimes, as we are well aware, are in this position where their pelvis is tipped forward into an anterior pelvic tilt. Not really new information there, but what an anterior pelvic tilt represents is our center of mass being pushed forward onto our forefoot, more so relative to our rear foot. Therefore, if our vestibular system senses that we are falling forward, we're going to create some sort of response to that. And what that often entails is if this is moving very far forward, then this is gonna start to move back. Our thoracic spine is gonna move back and our head's gonna jut forward. And now you have that classic example of that lower cross syndrome. Now, why are we falling forward in the first place? Well, it has to do with the fact that we can't properly rotate and shift from side to side. Now, if we lack rotation or the ability to effectively shift from side to side, then we're going to give our body a reason to create extension because this requires less rotation. And now I can just move through the world with a stiff body, but it's to ourselves a more safe body than being lost in space and just trying to figure out how to rotate when that rotation isn't a great option for us. Now I'm gonna be focusing on what's happening up here in this video, but I do have content on what to do if you lack rotation at our pelvis. But this stuff, the cervical, the cranial stuff can absolutely create a lack of rotation at the hips. And for some people, until they address what's happening here, they will never be able to make meaningful progress in their ability to restore movement options at the hips because our brain doesn't feel safe, our vestibular system feels unstable, and therefore the rest of our body will as well. The first way that our head and neck can create a lack of rotation on one or both sides is a lack of proper molar contact. That means teeth contact on the very back teeth right here. Now our molars are designed to obviously chew and break down food, but chewing is this rotational movement of our jaw. And if we can't sense our molars on one or both sides, then that creates a lack of stability in our jaw on one or both sides. Now, these molars are also lightly involved within our sense of posture and that can be really important the way i like to think about our molars is our molars are the equivalent of our heels in our mouth if someone's had teeth pulled they have poor alignment of their jaw they're missing some back teeth then that can influence heavily what's going on with the rest of their body because their body doesn't feel safe their vestibular system feels compromised that's going to create a cascading layer of compensation down the chain now let's look at someone who can't sense their back teeth on the left side in particular as well as they can on the right and these muscles are reflexively tight because they don't feel safe or stable on that left side but then 
thing when I give them a little popsicle stick and have them gently bite down on that left side. And now I can fully internally rotate and AD duck that hip and get it in a neutral position. And this isn't magic. We just gave them more of a sense of vestibular safety. Now there are specific types of people that are trained to develop appliances that will help align yourself a little bit better within your jaw and your teeth. Regular braces don't get the job done here in a lot of cases because we need to appreciate what's happening globally within the cranium as it relates to your teeth and the rest of the body. So if you're looking for someone that can potentially help with that, I will link a map of providers down below. Just make sure that they've taken some cranial or occlusal and cervical courses. The other thing that can influence this is their visual system. I need to constantly unconsciously be scanning my periphery, which means my field of vision outside my central focused vision. If I take a step forward with my left foot, as I move through the world, my periphery is aware of objects that are on the left side of my body. And that means that my vestibular system is aware of my body moving through space forward relative to objects moving back towards me. And that allows me to feel safe and be unconsciously aware of what's on that side so I can balance better and effectively shift into that side. But if I lack my left peripheral vision to some extent, for whatever reason, it can be very much multifactorial, then my body will never feel safe shifting over to the left side. Let me give you an example. Here's a former client of mine who was really struggling to get their hip flexors to let go on the left side and was struggling to be able to shift properly into the left. Now, once we addressed his vision, look at what happened. I put him in left stance and I had him cover his right eye. And you can see, based off of his response, it's pretty amazing how quickly he was able to better breathe and feel stable on that left side. Now, those are the two biggest things and they can be interrelated, but oftentimes people either have a jaw or a dental issue or they have a visual issue that is preventing them from having a vestibular system that feels safe. And if the vestibular system doesn't feel safe, then we're going to create extension to create stability in a compensatory manner, which is going to extend our low back obviously, but also push our pelvis forward and keep our psoas locked up. Now, while this is game changing information and can change your life, it's also important to understand you gotta start with the basics first. In order to get our center of mass to be brought back into relatively more of a neutral position, we can do that with musculature and positions and breathing that will allow us to feel safe moving our center of mass back. And that can help us let go of tension within our hip flexors and psoas. So I highly encourage you to either look at other videos I have on that content, but also you can check out my beginner body restoration program. And this is designed to give exactly as the name suggests, beginners a great introduction into exercises that will train exactly that. But if you're not seeing any progress, the progress you're looking for, then some of the more upper cervical cranial things can be of consideration if you find that those things make a much bigger, longer lasting change than some of the stuff in my other content or my beginner body restoration program. But it's essential that we start with the basics because you could be spending a lot of money for an unnecessary reason.